Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Ashuruk TV. Today's stories include Juba negotiations agreed to allocate 40% of revenues to two regions. Sudan proposes crude oil for fuel deal to South Sudan. Federal Ministry of Health records 410 cases of COVID-19 within 72 hours. The government delegation to the Juba negotiations headed by Shamsuddin Kabashi and the SPLM North, led by Malik Agar of the Revolutionary Front, held a negotiation session via video conference at Salam Rotana Hotel in Khartoum. With the participation of the Southern Mediation, headed by advisor of the President of the State of South Sudan for Security Affairs, Tut Galwak. Member of the government delegation, Ismail Taj, announced in a press statement that the negotiations reached an agreement to allocate 40% of the revenues of the two regions, Blue Nile and South Kordofan, to the government of the region. He outlined that the two sides agreed to form a commission for religious freedom to address all issues related to religious freedoms in order to affirm the principle of peaceful coexistence in the country. The two sides also agreed to establish a ministry for peace and human rights, he added. A senior Sudanese official revealed that Prime Minister Abdullah Hamadouk discussed on with South Sudanese President Sal Fakir supplying Khartoum with additional oil crude for gasoline refined in Sudan. In February 2016, the two countries agreed that South Sudan will provide Sudan with 20,000 barrels of crude oil per day to be used in power production and cover its local needs. The price of the oil crude fees paid by South Sudan for exporting its oil using Sudan's pipeline and oil infrastructure. The government of South Sudan agreed in principle after talks between Prime Minister Hamadok and President Salfakir Miardet, who promised to respond within the next two days, he added. South Sudan oil production has reached 1,065 barrels per day. The share of the government in Juba is about 70,000 barrels, while the rest is divided between its foreign partners. Sudan's oil production is currently at 63,000 barrels per day. The United Arab Emirates, through its development and international cooperation arm, Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, delivered a third batch of medical supplies to Sudan. On the 5th of May, the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development announced 75 million dirhams, equivalent to $20 million worth of pharmaceutical and medical supplies, to support Sudan's healthcare sector. The Embassy of the United Arab Emirates said that Sudan's National Medical Supplies Fund received the third shipment of the $20 million medicines and medical supplies. The first and second batches of 135 tons of medical supplies were delivered earlier this month. The remainder will be dispatched at a later time this year. The UAE aid agency said these medical equipments and medicines are part of the 1.5 billion aid package approved by the UAE in April 2019 to support Sudan's economic and financial stability. The head of the National Ummah Party, Sadiq al-Mahdi, met at his home with the U.S. Sajid Affairs, Brian Shukan in Khartoum, in the presence of the embassy's political and economic advisor. The meeting, which was held in the presence of Mr. Ibrahim Ali Ibrahim, the director of the head of the National Ummah Party, discussed the current political situation and the latest developments at the local and international levels. The Minister of Culture and Information, the spokesman for the government, Faisal Mohammed Saleh, noted at the unified platform at the doctor's house this evening that the cabinet's meeting today heard to an enlightenment presented by Prime Minister Dr. Abdel Hamadouk on the sphere meeting he held with the Egyptian side negotiating on the Renaissance Dam in the presence of the Egyptian Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Irrigation, the Director of Intelligence and their counterparts from Sudan. He said that the meeting discussed how to tackle outstanding issues and resume negotiations in the Renaissance Dam, stressing the continuation of another similar meeting with the Ethiopian side, indicating that Sudan is not a mediator but a party to the Renaissance Dam issue and that Sudan has good relations with both parties. The Minister of Culture and Information said that there are some problems between the parties and Sudan trying to get the negotiators back to Washington to resume negotiations. In its regular meeting, chaired by Prime Minister Abdullah Hamadouk, the cabinet heard to a statement on the meeting of Sudan's friends held in Paris on the 7th of May, 
presented by the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Ibrahim Al Badawi. The Minister of Culture and Information, the government's spokesman, Faisal Mohammed Saleh, said in a press statement that the Minister of Finance pointed to the securing of the support of Sudan's friends to the transitional government in order to overcome the challenges it's facing. The meeting also pointed to the initial commitment of some of the European Union countries to provide support of $100 million from Germany and France until the provision of the largest support expected by the Convention of the Donors Conference that will be held next June. The Sudanese Federal Ministry of Health has announced 410 confirmed cases of coronavirus, including 10 deaths, according to the epidemiological report for the last three days, date the 18th, the 19th and the 20th of current May, bringing the total number since the beginning of the pandemic to 3,138 cases, and the number of cases which confirmed full recovery have reached 309 and total death toll to 121. The delegation of the Transitional Sovereign Council and the Council of Ministers, headed by Mohammed al faqih Suleiman, heard during the joint meeting at the guest house in Medani with the Security Committee of Al Jazeera State to a report on the incidents between the areas of Fadasi and Al Azaza in Greater Medani locality. The member of the Sovereign Council, al faqih praised the roles of the government of Al Jazeera State in resolution of the problems and the compensation of the affected persons after holding accountable those who caused these incidents. On her part, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Wala al Bushi, noted in a statement that the meeting heard to an enlightenment about the security challenges facing the state and the flow of strategic goods, asserting that such incidents are strange to Al Jazeera society, indicating that the coming period needs wisdom, unity of ranks, and the abandoning of violence. The Council of Ministers held its regular meeting headed by Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadouk. The Council discussed the report of the security situation in the country presented by the Minister of Interior, Abdullah Idris, who reviewed the criminal situation in the country, noting to the most outstanding incidents in the states of South Darfur, South Kordofan, Kassala, Khartoum and the measures taken. The Minister of Culture and Information, the government's spokesman, Faisal Mohammed Saleh, noted in a press statement that the cabinet discussed the implementation of the lockdown measures, indicating that the citizens were not committed to the closure, saying that the council had asserted the strengthening of the police role in implementing the banned measures and taking legal actions. And now we remind you with the headlines. Juba negotiations agreed to allocate 40% of revenues to two regions. Sudan proposes crude oil for fuel deal to South Sudan. Federal Ministry of Health records 410 cases of COVID-19 within 72 hours. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you next time.